and I and I was I was I don't know. Sometimes I pay attention to where my mind goes during worship, and you know what thoughts you know go through my mind by the Holy Spirit. And I was thinking back in my past, and I was having these visions of my past of the moment I first met Jesus when I was 14 years old, and my mom walked through the front door of our house after being at a Catholic charismatic healing mass, and she was completely healed, delivered, and saved by by Jesus, by the Holy by God the Father, Jesus, and Holy Spirit. Just encountered by God. And that week my whole family got saved. I remember the moment she walked through the front door from being bedridden to being totally healed by Jesus. I remember it. And I remember without anyone telling me anything, the Holy Spirit awakening my heart to the revelation that I needed forgiveness of sin as, at 14 years old. No one even told me to ask Jesus to be my Savior. I just asked him because I knew I needed him to be. That's the type of spirit of wisdom and revelation that's going to bring a whole generation to God. It's literally going to be the Holy Spirit resting upon people, awakening their hearts to the reality of Jesus and their need of him. Oh, praise the Lord. And then I, and then my mind fast forwarded a few years when I was a teenager in my room just worshiping Jesus for hours and the Holy Spirit would come and fill my bedroom. For hours, Holy, per, the person of the Holy Spirit would just come and fill my room. And I would just spend at 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 years old just hours in the presence of God in my room. And then I fast forward to when I was a young pastor and I just started in ministry. And I'm sitting in my office and the glory of God comes over me and... I don't know, maybe 10 hours just sitting in the manifest glory of God. And the Lord speaking things into my heart that would change my future. I re and then I, 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 I remembered all these flashes were coming to me. I remember moments where I would be in the presence of God. I remember even encountering God through people. And I remember being in a meeting with Jill Austin. How many remember Jill Austin? And I remember in Kansas City, sitting on the front row as a very young prophetic minister and feeling these winds, these winds hover in front of me as angels manifested all over the room. Literally a physical wind just hover right in front of me of angelic presence. Then I remember being at a woman's conference hiding in the balcony. <laughs> and Patricia King called me out and in front of 700 ladies, the lightning of God electrocuted me and put me horizontally in the air and body slammed me on the floor as God called me to go to the nations. God knows how to get your attention. And I'm telling you, there are those moments of power encounter that shift your life. There are those moments of encounter with Jesus where he steps right into your present now moment and shifts you into a new season. Shifts you into a new place. And I was just having tonight toward worship all of these flashes of moments where God encountered me. I remember the moment I went to Toronto. I was talking um, with, with a dear brother who was bringing me here to church tonight. And we were reminiscing about the Toronto outpouring. I remember in 1990-something, four or five, I remember being in, a, in the church in Toronto and John Arnott walking off the platform and touching my hand and a fireball hit me right in the belly and I fell under the power of God and was delivered from a trauma in my past that I didn't even know I needed to be healed and delivered from. But it was like just being in the presence of God, God reached in and pulled stuff out that he did not want there. Come on now, that's what Jesus does. That is what God does. He steps right into where you are and reaches in. He encounters you and pulls out everything that doesn't belong. Everything the enemy tried to put in, God's like, nope, that don't belong in your life. And he pulls it right out. And then he anoints you to pull other people out. That's why in the spirit, some of you sitting here tonight, you are so dangerous in the spirit because of the stuff you've had to contend with. The stuff you've had to deal with in your life. The stuff you've had to walk through and God has pulled you out of. That is what makes you dangerous. Your past trauma doesn't make you weak. Your past trauma makes you dangerous. 
Because you know that God showed up and God was bigger and God was greater and God was more powerful than anything the enemy tried to do to knock you out. And that revelation makes you dangerous tonight. Oh, come on now. God wants you to know how dangerous you are. He wants you to remember what he's done in your life. He wants you to have a fresh encounter with him in your present moment. And he wants you to realize that he is going to be intricately involved in every day of your life. All the way until you are in glory. Oh, hallelujah. I think I wore my orange shirt tonight because orange is the happy color. Orange means joy, and I think God wants you to be radically, radically joyful in his glory as you remember that he is the God of your past, your present, and your future. Nothing takes God by surprise. In fact, I've learned something. God has always steps ahead of the enemy. Whenever the enemy tries to finagle something, God is already ahead of that. To make sure that it works out for his purpose and plan in your life. <laughs> do you realize you can't lose? I mean, do you realize that? Even when you go through warfare and resistance, everything that happens will still turn out for God's purpose and plan in your life. That's why you've got to get the hot anointing. When everything is going crazy, ha. Because you know no matter what it looks like right now, if it doesn't look good, that's okay. Because God's not finished yet. You just got to turn the page and you'll see the next sentence. You'll see the next chapter. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You are going to find the one whom your soul loves. You're going to see his face. You're going to know him in this present moment in a fresh new way. I feel like there's an awakening. There's an awakening where God is opening and awakening hearts to see the face of Jesus all over again. In a whole new fresh way. I was reading this scripture from Song of Solomon 3. On my, on my bed, night after night, I dreamed. Listen, pay attention to your dreams. God will speak to you through dreams. Unless you had pizza before you went to sleep, then I don't know. But on my bed, night after night, I dreamed that I sought the one whom my soul loves. I sought him, but I did not find him. I said, so I must arise now. I have to get up and I've got to go out into the city, into the streets, into the squares, places I do not know. I must seek him whom my soul loves. There is something that God is putting in the heart of his people where it's going to be like, I've got to see Jesus. I've got to see God. I've got to get up from where I've been sitting and I've got to seek after God. I've got to look maybe in places I didn't look before. I saw him, but I didn't find him. The watchmen who go around the city, they found me. And I said, have you seen him whom my soul loves? Scarcely had I passed him when I found him whom my soul loves. And I held on to him and would not let him go. You're going to find the one whom your soul loves. And you're going to hold on to him and not let him go. No matter what happens in your life, you are holding on to Jesus. Come on now. You are holding on to your relationship with God. You are holding on to his presence. You are holding on to his heart. You are holding on to him. Oh, hallelujah. 